Hi guys, welcome to today's video. Today I thought we could do something and just talk out, out to each other and uh, talk about the pros and cons of using prime lenses over a, um, a zoom lens. Um, so there's been a lot of videos of people saying obviously that you, all you need is a zoom lens like a super zoom like a 60 to 600 like Sigma have just launched and why do people continue to use prime lenses when you can buy such good lenses from Sigma or Tamron. Um, so what I'm going to do is go through the pros and cons of a prime lens in itself and we can talk about everything that's good. I'll say everything that I find bad about it as well sometimes. So what we'll start is, is with the bad stuff. Um, number one, when you get to big primes like this is for sure the weight. This is a 500mm. It weighs over four kilos, which is twice over twice the weight of a contemporary 150 to 600 mil. You can hand hold it, but only for short periods of time. Unless you're someone like Jared Poden, who has huge arms and um, shows them off on a regular basis, you can not hand hold this for a long period of time. Um, so this is always on a monopod for me, but carrying it around big zoos, carrying it out for walks, wildlife walks, it does get a little bit tiresome after after a few hours. So that's one negative on here. Number two, you obviously don't have that ability to zoom in and out, um, which is a can be a bit of a hindrance. You can miss shots if you're not prepared for it. So you can have an animal coming towards you. I'll be using the 500 mil and it'll get to a point where the minimum focus on this one is not great. Let's have a look. It's 4.5 meters in minimum focus on this lens. Um, and you get to a point where you're like, I need a, something a bit closer. I tend to throw this on my shoulder and then I'll grab my 300 mil, which I always have packed to my right hand side. And then I can get there, but I've missed a few moments of shots there just because um, it physically not being able to focus close enough um, from that. The newer ones aren't as bad. This is obviously a Mark I, but still something to keep in mind. Um, you can obviously zoom in and out by moving yourself physically forward and backwards but you have to pre-plan the shot a little bit more sometimes just because it being a prime. As a wildlife lens, when you're out and about, it's not as much of an issue because the stuff you're shooting is usually further away, but you do have to keep in mind that that's the um, thing to look for. The third thing, price. Um, primes cost a lot more. And if you consider that with a prime lens, especially if you want to get a full zoom range, so if we equivalent talking about say 150 to 600 mil from um, Sam Sigma so like the sport lens or contemporary you can get a contemporary for between 600 and 900 pounds second hand and a sport up to is about 1200 pounds I think second hand this is two on its own for a 500 mil the 600 mils are 3000 pound um, around about that point then if you want something in the middle of the focal range you're looking at three or 400 mil 300 mil start at 1800 400 mil start at 4,000, and then you'll need something shorter range, so I have the 70 to 200 to cover that sort of basis, and you're looking at between 600 and 2,000 for one of those. So overall, to have the full spectrum, you're looking at a minimum of 5,000 to have a full minimum spectrum compared to 600 pound potentially if you've got a contemporary Sigma. Um, and maximum, you can, uh, you can obviously spend on a new 600 mil, 13,000 pound. So that's a big factor to think about if you start committing to primes is you're not just buying the one prime. Sometimes you're going to need other focal lengths for that prime. Um, so I say I have the 500, the 300 and the 7200 of my three major wildlife lenses that I take out. I've also done a video on that last week about my three favourite wildlife lenses I currently own. Um, that's why I'm looking at potentially buying and trying to get hold of a 200 to 400 f4 with the inbuilt converter just because then I can potentially go out if I just want to go to my local zoo which is five miles away I don't need to carry three lenses I can just take one and just have a chilled day rather than taking getting on for like 15 kilos worth of gear I can just take a lens a body boom go and do a quick review with the r7 or um, other cameras and potentially might look at trying to get the R8 when that comes out as well just because it looks like a pretty good little package if the rumours are true but I can go do re quick reviews with those with just one lens instead of taking three and trying to work work out what the best lens to do and trying to get the shots they needed to do the reviews 
So they're the, the major negatives for using a prime. The positives are the quality of the glass used in a prime is huge. So you're paying more because the quality physically of that glass used is clearer, sharper, gives you better images. If there's no doubt about it, the more you spend on a lens, the better quality photos you can potentially take. It's not a guarantee, and you're not guaranteed to take the best photos in the world, but you are more likely to get a better, sharper image with a prime lens, just because of the way it's designed. Also, what you'll find is, is well, is that they just are slightly better built, I find. Um, I've not obviously looked at some of the higher end primes like the 100 to 500 RF um, and some of those L, big L lenses, but these are full metal, weather sealed. Um, I can only obviously speak about the Canon ones, I can't talk about the Sigma primes and the Nikon primes, I've never used them, but the Canon ones, these are full metal, waterproof, weather sealed. They are absolutely amazing. I, you cannot get any better quality, in my opinion, than having a good solid prime. They feel indestructible. Um, I've sort of th I've accidentally thrown this one into a bush when I was trying to get further tire gear because it was in the way. Absolutely fine, not a scratch on it. Um, they just really are built to last. They cost more money, but they are built to last. So that's one consideration to think as a positive um, for that. Um, the final positive is with a prime lens, they're designed to let in way more light. So the front element on this 500mm is huge. If you compare it to the front element on a Sigma, even the Sport Sigma 150 to 600, it's a much smaller front element. Um, it lets in less light, so the f-stop is much higher, 6.3 compared to 4. But then you've got to also consider that even though it's an f4, it's a bigger element, so it's still letting a lot more light in a, than the 150 side of a, um, a Sigma is. So. What I do find is, even though I've got the 7200 f2.8 and the 300mm f2.8, the 300mm f2.8 I can shoot at a lower ISO because that front element is so much bigger being a prime lens and it just lets in way more light. I can shoot at a, a lower ISO or a higher shutter speed. So if I'm doing stuff in motion, crank that up a little bit more than I can with the 7200 and I do get a lot better, sharper images from that 300mm just because of the flexibility that that lens gives you by being able to let in more light. Even though they're both f2.8 um, rated lenses, that front element lets in so much more light. So with this, when I was testing this against the Sigma that my dad's got, I was using a much lower ISO and a faster shutter speed on this than you do on the zoom lens. Obviously when I get the 200 to 400, that's f4, um, and I'll be able to test a little bit closer between are oh, these L lens zoom lens, the big things like the 100 to 500, 200 to 400, do they work in a similar sort of way as a prime lens? And maybe some of you guys have had that experience, so comment down below and let us know what your thoughts are and, and everything that you've come for in, in your time using these sort of lenses because a lot of you do comment about your past experiences and I love to see that some of you were the first people to use the 1D digitals when they first came out and took that jump from um, film to digital and I love seeing those stories and, and hearing from you guys so please do comment and let me know if you've had the experience because I'd, I'd love to find out I want to do my own testing obviously because I have the channel but it'd be good to hear what your personal experiences are from that so they're the major pros and cons. I think the most things that people are going to take away from this are is mainly the costing. When I decided to go for a prime lens, I did have a big thinking like, right, I'm going to get rid of my 150 to 600, and I'm going to be buying a 500 mil. I've got the 70 to 200. I'm going to have a gap between 200 and 500. I'm going to have to live with for a while. Um, is that something I want to do? And I made a decision. I was like, yes, I'll do that, and it was worth it in my opinion. The photo quality upgrade to get from one of these on the same camera body what the photos I was able to get the shutter speeds I was able to achieve the ISOs I was able to achieve was huge and worth it every day of the week so if I was to do it all again I would 100% go primes and primes are going to be my major lens choice moving forward um, for now I do plan so you get the 200 400 as I said a couple of times already that'll be probably one of the only zooms as well as the 70 200 I have 
everything else I really want to get an 800 mil um, EF I'm waiting for those prices to come down a bit so I really want to see how that lens performs it's a monster of a lens um, it'd be great for a trip I've got planned potentially into the Arctic and that's why I want it for but I want to get that I do want to try a 400 f2.8 as well at some point but there are other projects and stuff I want to get so I want to get some of the cheaper primes like the 300 mil f4 the um, 400 mil 5.6 and I want to test them against the, the higher end primes that I've got to see is do you get that same prime experience with a lower costing prime obviously I've only got experience with the higher end primes I want to test those lower end primes so you guys know is there worth a step up going from the 300 f4 to the 300 2.8 there's a big old price gap there you know there's a 1500 pound price gap between the two of them second hand value so I'm going to do that testing so you guys don't have to I'll also test them on mirrorless as well so you can see if those older lenses do work very well on mirrorless and that's where the R8 or the R10 whichever one I decide to go for will come into play a little bit there as well so hope you've enjoyed this video as I've said please leave your comments below of what your thoughts are on primes compared to zoom lenses and I'll get back to you with another video soon thanks as always catch you later goodbye